I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, here we have this Insignia power supply that came out of a Dell Optiplex 390 system. Uh, this was something that got installed to replace a failed power supply in that system. And I pulled it to have a look at and also because this power supply was definitely oversized for that computer. And I figured it would be a nice opportunity to make a video about it. So I looked online on Best Buy's site and Best Buy no longer carries this power supply. They probably moved on to some new model at this point. I don't know the exact age of this unit. But let's go ahead and get you a look at the spec label there. Paul's view specs. So we can see right away this is an 80 plus power supply. Um, it is definitely a 12 volt heavy supply, so that's good for modern computers. It can supply um, up to 32 amps on its single 12 volt rail for a max power of 384 watts just on a 12 volt rail. And it has a 5 volt rail and 3.3 volt rail that have 18 amps available each. So, not too bad for a unit, um, for a more modern design unit. And you can see, it is actually, well, um, you can't see, but this is actually a pretty hefty unit. Um, the actual power supply it does have a good bit of heft to it. I don't know what the MSRP of this power supply was when it was sold at Best Buy. I may have to have a look at that. So let me go and take a quick look. Okay, so I'm on the uh, Wayback Machine, uh, which is on which is web.archive.org, and we can see this power supply. It is, in fact, the same model. Um, back in 2018, this sold for $39.99, so $40. So, um, let's see what $40 back in 2018 would get you for a power supply unit. So, again, 450 watt supply, 80 plus. Um, it is an active PFC unit. I can definitely see inside here that we have active power practice correction. Um, we got a 120 millimeter fan up here. And of course, there's your look inside, which we're going to take the cover off here in a moment and actually have a real look inside the unit. So, with this you get a 20 plus 4 pin power connector move that to the side and also it's a very lengthy connector too we also have two Molex connections and a floppy disk connection there two SATA connections Two set of connections, so a total of four set of connections. Have a four plus four pin CPU power connection for ATX 12 volt. Um, you can have, of course, the, the classic four pin connection or the EPS 12 volt connection, which is eight pins for your CPU power. And we have not just one, but two six plus two pin. PCI Express graphics card connections. So, two MOS connections, one floppy connection, four SATA power connections, and two graphics card connections. I think that's pretty reasonable for a 450 watt supply. But there's one thing I do want to um, note is almost all this wiring, except I'm going to say except for the main uh, motherboard connection. Yeah, that does look to be decent wiring. I've got to try to see what we have there. It's hard to tell because it's wrapped in the sleeving. But a lot of this wiring seems rather thin. We've got some 20 gauge wiring on the SATA power connections. 20 gauge wiring on the 
four pin Molex and floppy connections. We got 20 gauge wiring on the PCI Express graphics card connections. And we have eighteen gauge wiring on the four plus four pin CPU power connection. And it looks like we have eighteen gauge on the twenty plus four pin motherboard connection. So you can see that they kind of skimped on the wiring for the graphics cards, which can pull a lot of power. Um, but also the drive connections. So for forty dollars, you are going to be there are going to be some uh, cost downs with this, and you can see that with the wiring, yeah, we definitely do have some of that. Um, compare that to this Dynex four hundred watt unit back here, which is also made by the same manufacturer as the power supply we're looking at. You can see. It appears okay that's 20 gauge too on that six pin connection so yeah even this older unit here does have um, some 20 gauge wiring in it but you can see almost every connection here is sleeved at least up to the power supply with this newer insignia 450 watt unit only the motherboard connection is sleeved the rest of everything is like spaghetti so now I can say that uh, if you take the time to uh, add some zip ties to this stuff, um, you can tidy these wires up a bit and make them less messy. And you can of course manage them into a decent case that allows for decent cable management. Cables are nice and lengthy. It looks like we got at least two feet on uh, the graphics card connections as well as the CPU power connections. Looks like we have at least two feet on that motherboard connection there, so lots of length there. So that's definitely good for uh, for modern cases that had the power supply in it bottom mounted. Now, let's go ahead and take the cover off and have a look inside. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take the cover off this unit. And, of course, you want to exercise caution when you're opening up a power supply. Because sometimes they can store voltage, and you got to be careful about that. Okay, so now we're inside, and um, this is a Hunt Key power supply, and it's also the same OEM as that older Dynex 400 watt supply. I can say that Hunt Key is, they're definitely not the best, but they're definitely not the worst either. Um, they're kind of in the middle, middle of the road. Um, we have, of course, big, uh, we, we definitely do have um, some decent components in here. We have, um, of course, looks to be a full EMI filtering stage, starting with an X cap and two y, and y caps on the uh, AC plug. And down here we have, that's either a thermistor, or more likely that's MOV, because it's, it's, uh, it's heat shrinked. So, have that, and we have two large filter chokes for the uh, main input. We got another X cap there. We got a bridge rectifier back here, which the side that is uh, that has the uh, important info is actually facing toward the heat sink, but you can see it's heat synced. And we have our active PFC right over here. Um, okay, this here might be our inrush NTC because I see what looks to be an MOV back here, and I'll get you a look at that. So, there's a look at the active PFC as well as a rectifier bridge. You can see the uh, bridge rectifier is bolted to the heatsink for extra cooling. The APFC definitely has a good bit of cooling, 
And of course I got this big choke here, which is typical for the uh, APFC. We have a 330 microfarad bolt capacitor, which is I think a good decent size for this for this unit. Here we have our main switches, we have two. Our 5 volt standby is IC. Now I can see the 5 volt standby um, flyback control I see right there. I think it's yes, a flyback. Um, right here we have our aux transformer for the 5 volt standby and our main transformer there. Here's our secondary side heat sink. Can't really make out one all is down there, but uh, it does look like it's decent quality. Here we have our output stage here. Got a good size choke there. Got a nice variety of capacitors. A Hein 57 mixture of capacitor brands. Ranging from Rubicon to Sampgon. Uh, Fcon. So this is like an FSP. It's got a whole bunch of different cap brands shoved into the same unit. All the caps look fine. No bulging caps. It's nice that we actually do have a Samson and a Rubicon in there. So, try to get you, get you a look at that. So it's definitely not a bad power supply, at least from a visual, a visual perspective. That being said, um, Hunky, the reason why I say they're kind of in the middle as far as power supply quality goes, is um, Hunky. I will say that some of their power supplies, they have uh, like short circuit protection but they don't some of them don't have over power protection for example the Dynex 400 watt power supplies were known for for uh, popping their main switchers if you overload the units uh, matter of fact they now defunct Johnny Guru's site had a had a load test video of a uh, Dynex 400 watt power supply showing the unit exploding when overloaded um, it's it's important for good it's in, it's important for power supplies to have over power protection and for it to work. Another example of units without proper working over power protection will be some power supplies that Gigabyte launched, and these power supplies were bundled with graphics cards. And in order to certain buy these graphics cards, you had to also buy the power supply with the graphics card. And these power supplies, they were known for. <laughs> they were known for issues. They were known for failing. Um, sometimes not even at full load, uh, just failing, and sometimes taking out components. And matter of fact, uh, minus Tech Tips and uh, Gamers Nexus, those big channels, they had a lot of videos talking about these units, and also doing. They were actually doing load tests on the units and having them fail one by one by one, and Gigabyte not stepping up to the plate and honoring warranties and things like that and giving people to run around and stuff like that um, so it's, it's important it's, it's, it's real important for power supplies to have proper working over power protection that way the power supply is shut down in the event that it is overloaded um, now I don't I can't say this unit does not have OPP it may actually have proper working OPP um, but I have to look online to see if anybody's actually load testing one of these things to find out but I can say, um, for $40, it's definitely not too bad. Um, you're not getting the best quality unit. Um, you could spend, of course, a little extra money and get a Corsair unit that has proper size wiring and everything is sleeved, and, or matter of fact, modular for that matter, if you purchase a modular unit. Um, but this is definitely not bad. Um, I would definitely use this in a system, and this will ultimately end up going into a system. Um, I'll end up putting this into a computer that, um, of course, has more of a need for this type of supply. That being said, um, these units, I've seen them on, e I think on eBay, for like 30 bucks. so 
it's not too bad actually so anyways um yeah 25 to 30 dollars um, of course that's used to be like this right here pre-owned used but anyways um I'll definitely say um, the build quality of this unit I'd say it, it pretty much fit the price for its time so anyways uh, that is a look inside this unit if you ever if you actually have one of these power supplies now you know what it looks like, looks like inside without having to take the cover off yourself so anyways hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cute Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.